In question one of problem set eight, we begin by looking at Bessel's equation, which is the second order differential equation, where n is some integer greater than or equal to zero. We know from a previous problem set the solutions are given by the Bessel functions jn of x, which is listed here as a Taylor series expansion. Next, for 1a, what we want to do is we want to show this recurrence relation, jn plus 1 of x is equal to 2n over x times jn of x minus jn minus 1 of x. To do this, we can substitute in the Taylor series expansion of the Bessel function into the right-hand side of the recurrence relation, and we combine the two series into 1. We'd like to combine the two fractions together, but before we do that, notice that k is equal to 0 implies the sum of the two gives 0. Our new summation now starts from k is equal to 1 to infinity. And we're going to shift now k to k plus 1 in order for the powers of x to go up in powers of k rather than k plus 1. This gives the new right-hand side, which is recognized as the Bessel function of n plus 1. For question 1b, let's assume that alpha is a 0 of the Bessel function of degree n of x. And we'd like to show that the integral from 0 to 1 of x times the Bessel function squared is equal to 1 half times the derivative of the Bessel function evaluated at alpha squared. If we write down the integral as i, then we can use the substitution z is equal to alpha x, and so dz is equal to alpha dx, to put the integral into the following form from z is equal to 0 to z is equal to alpha. And integration by parts now gives the two terms. The first term is 0 because at the upper limit z is equal to alpha, the Bessel function is 0, while at the lower limit z is equal to 0. But then the question is, what do we do with the second term? For this term, we have to return back to the original differential equation. We put x is equal to z and y is equal to jn into the differential equation and isolate the z squared jn term. This is now used in the integrand to give the following result. In fact, the three terms in the integrand can be written as a single derivative, and the integral can then be shown to give two terms, a derivative of jn alpha squared, and a jn evaluated at 0 squared. But if we examine the Taylor series expansion of jn, then we see that jn at 0 is 0. This leaves us with the final result, and i is equal to 1 half times jn at alpha squared, and the problem is complete.